Hello everyone, my name is Carlos and today I'm going to talk to you about uh, reading to improve your product craft. Um, the rough agenda for today is, uh, first of all, right, as product managers, we really want to understand why we do something. So first I'm going to explain you why I think reading and especially why reading books is an important um, something important for us to do as product managers. And then if I convince you that uh, reading is important, then of course the next question is what to read, uh, how to best do it. And uh, then of course you want to be able, or you want to make sure that you can apply also those learnings uh, back at your work or with your team. So I'm also gonna talk a bit about that. And I also gonna end up with some uh, book recommendations in case someone wants to get started and wants to uh, read well. Uh, but I think at the, some of the most popular and uh, more useful uh, books for product managers. Uh, before I uh, dive into the content, uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, so as an introduction, as I mentioned, uh, I'm Carlos, originally from Peru, but now I am uh, living in Amsterdam and I'm working for Booking.com as a senior product manager. Uh, and I also work as a, in a side project for productbookclub.com where Basically, we meet once a month with other product managers and we discuss one book online. Uh, before that, I've also been working on other startups as a co-founder in a couple of uh, companies. And so, yeah, quite some time in product management. Related to that topic about reading, right? you can also find me on Goodreads. You can find there all the books that I've been reading and the reviews. Um, so now starting into the, the topic, right? Uh, first of all, why should we read? Um, I think that we all can agree, and I cannot argue against it, that uh, one of the best ways of learning is by doing, right? Or even more important, or you get more learnings by failing or by teaching. Uh, but if you want to learn by doing something, for example, if you want to learn about building a product from scratch, uh, and you want to get the learnings from doing it, you first need to have access to it, right? And they would need a lot of luck if someone gives you uh, that opportunity without you having the knowledge first, right? So that's what I think compared to learning by doing it, learning by reading is uh, way more accessible for everyone. So I think the reach is way higher. And that's what I have the first point uh, that I, con I consider reading a uh, very cheap learning and also part of a continuous uh, learning, right? Which sends me to my second question, or my second point, sorry. Uh, which is related to keep developing the curiosity mindset that I think all product managers should have. And now if you read as well some uh, blog posts or if you see several videos, uh, one of the main uh, or most important soft skills that are now always look on product managers is to have this curiosity mindset, right? And not only curiosity in who your customers are or curiosity on uh, the data that you have about your product, or how your business uh, works, but just in general, curiosity and understanding a problem and then try to get this extra knowledge so that then you, you can be better positioned to, to come up with solutions. So I think entering into this habit of reading and setting it maybe even as a goal uh, helps you develop this, uh, this mindset of curiosity, right? That, that again, as I mentioned, I think is very important. Uh, and well, uh, last point, but uh, not least important, I think reading also will, of course, help you a lot um, to keep up with just all the new trends and technologies that are ha happening in the industry or maybe that are related to your product, right? Um, again, I think um, just by reading, you will keep, uh, well, of course, learning more and more, getting more references, understanding more deeply into a specific topic, and also related to curiosity, I think once you start reading one uh, book that you then really become uh, passionate about, like, for example, persuasion or like a specific framework, then once you find the sources, then you, you, you just start getting to know more and more and uh, trying to find more about it. So I think it really helps you to develop this uh, curiosity mindset. Now, of course, you can get a lot of these uh, learnings or this cheap learning, as I'm calling it, from reading not only books, but also, I don't know, tweets or blog posts, right? So why, why do I refer as reading specifically books? Uh, because, well, 
of course, they have a higher editorial standard. So whatever you will read from a book has been checked and revised by several people, by several peers in the industry before someone makes that uh, those uh, learnings of that writing about specific topics. So I think um, you are more sure to get this uh, higher quality content from, from books compared to just reading something on a blog post. Um, Another point is as well that by looking into the books uh, or from reading the books, you will find topics that have been usually better researched or well thought than just a, a blog or a tweet, right? So for example, if you really want to understand more about um, usability or if you want to understand more how um, a user or like how the, the brain works, for example, in the books you will uh, find, of course, most of the time, all the different experiments or all the re different research studies that have been done and that validate uh, whatever hypothesis the, the author is uh, proposing, right? Uh, and then uh, the last point is also that uh, usually someone or an author would write about the book when they think it's uh, a topic that is uh, important enough, right? Therefore, it's something that is built to last compared to a blog post that might be something very uh, specific to a period of time. And so that's why I think that reading books, uh, it's sometimes more important than the other blog posts. Of course, with blog posts uh, as well, you, you you will find a lot of content very useful, but I think in a book one, you will get a lot much more uh, ha or higher quality of the content. And now, if I've uh, convinced you enough on why reading is important, and maybe more specifically, reading is important for you as a product manager. Of course, the next question is then, uh, what should I read, right? Uh, in terms of deciding what to read, of course, there are a lot of different ways to go about it, but, but at least how I approach it, uh, which is uh, what I wanted to share, is I usually start asking myself, where do I stand now and where do I want to be, right? What does this mean? Uh, basically, or most of the time related to what skills do I want to develop, right? So for example, if you are a software engineer in maybe more going into uh, the product manager role, maybe you want to read more books about uh, user, uh, about usability or about user experience, right? The same way maybe you're someone from marketing and you're joining a team that is going to be in charge of platform, you want to read maybe some more uh, technology heavy books, right? So I think this is one uh, good way of approaching it. Uh, because as I mentioned as well, what you want to get out of the book is learnings, right? So you first need to identify where you have those biggest gaps and then try to find which are the best books that might address those and uh, those gaps that you have already identified. Um, another uh, point or another thing to consider when deciding what to read is of course, how well do you know your industry, right? So. Um, what I think are the key requirements or key priorities for every product manager is to have deep knowledge of the user, deep knowledge of your, your data, your product, deep knowledge of your business, but also deep knowledge of your industry, right? What is going on in there? Um, so reading a book or uh, yeah, reading a book about it that might also help you to understand better how or what role your company or even better, what role your team place in your company and what role your company plays in the whole industry. And then maybe we'll also help you to come up with new ideas or directions for, for your team. Um, and then the, the last point that um, I tend to recommend also to consider is that uh, what other new developments, de developments might be relevant to your business or to your users, right? So for example, books about uh, machine learning or books about some new frameworks on how to do prioritization uh, might also be something that you consider when decide when deciding that next book right um, related to this as well something i found very uh, useful and that i usually recommend is if it's the first time for example that you're joining a team where you have uh, a ux designer then maybe you want to read something like uh, the design on of everyday things right uh, when i join a team working on the machine learning platform as well. I was reading some more, uh, well, books re related to algorithms or books related to uh, machine learning um, that helped me sort of like to get grasped and to get a kickstart on, on my team, right? So I think those are 
some of the most important points to consider when you are thinking about what, what book to pick next. Now, if you don't want to go through all the hassle of making this question for yourself and then deciding and researching what book to pick, an easier way or another way to do it is, of course, also to just join a book club or even start a book club, right? So, for example, myself, myself I started a, a book club at booking.com where um, with some other product managers, we would just basically pick a book and then uh, discuss with them uh, face-to-face, right? Uh, then now we took that to, um, to have a, a bigger reach and to also give the opportunity to other product managers from other companies to join us and we launched a product book club. And uh, so if you want, you can also join us there and then, uh, you know, the benefits from this would be that uh, the book club will be the one sort of like in charge of picking uh, or proposing what, what books we think are relevant for the audience. And then it's also um, good for you because it's also a good way to, to keep finding what new books are out there or what are the books that might be more relevant for most product managers. So you also want to keep up with that, right? Um, so those are like sort of like tips when you are trying to decide uh, what to read next. Now, if you have a um, make up your mind, you want to start reading, you have your, your, the next book you want to read, how to best do it, right? So now these are uh, personal or these are tips from myself based on what has worked uh, best for me. Uh, and I think the best one and the most eff- effective thing that I did was uh, block the time on your calendar, right? And try to make it a routine. Um, the book, The Power of Habit mentions it, right? How strong is it or how how useful is it when you make something part of a habit? So for example, just blocking one hour every day in the morning before you even uh, start working might help you a lot to really focus on that, right? So I do that myself. I I read every day in the morning for one hour before my, my, my girlfriend wakes up. So then I'm sure that I'm always focused and I always have this time allocated there so I can really uh, focus and, and read. And um, morning usually works better to me compared to the evening, for example, because then on the evening you might get some plans to, to go on dinner or whatever, and then it's easier to skip it, right? So that's what I think uh, blocking it and committing to it on your calendar is a very uh, important step. The second one is... Um, related but i think uh, different enough right to establish a goal a goal or set a, dead, a deadline and so as i mentioned part of my own goal is to read uh, one hour every day and then i i held myself accountable to do that right of course if it's if you are just now starting to read you can also set an initial goal of you know reading 20 or 30 minutes every day or just reading uh, 20 30 pages per day or certain chapters etc also bear in mind, you should not set, your, set yourself a goal that is like too big so that then you will get disappointed, but you know, you can start small and then keep increasing that. And setting a deadline, I think is also helpful. Uh, and this can also be linked to joining a book club, as I mentioned, right? So if you know that everyone else is gonna be reading the book until the end of the month, then that would also help you, uh, well, to allocate more time to it and then to, to really get through it. and and. and finish reading it before the deadline. Uh, in terms of how to get, get the most out of it uh, related to the learnings, what I do is you know, highlight or mark, mark sections that you enjoy the most, right? Uh, and then you know, once I finish highlighting all of these, at the end, when I finish the book, I go back and I check each of these. Uh, or after some time, I, I might come back to the book and reread only these spe- special sections. Um, so by just revisiting them when you finish, it also helps your memory to like uh, retain this better, right? And, uh, and as I said, it will also help you back when you want to consult a specific point or maybe when you want to keep a book close to your desk so that then you can uh, check specific things that you want to apply later on. Then this will also help you to go directly to the, to the specific chapters or areas that you found more useful. Uh, and at the end, I think, again, something else that worked really well for me is just to write a short summary about uh, the whole book, right? Again, this forces you to sort of revisit the whole uh, the whole book or all the things that you learn. 
and then to try to make a summary because in reality, you know, you will not remember the whole content from the book, but you will always remember the main takeaways, right? So by forcing yourself to write down this summary, um, you revisit it and then it makes it easier to, to, to retain uh, moving forward. I put bonus points if you share it because again, it worked well for me to, to not only write this summary, but then to also share it with our colleagues or share it on, on LinkedIn so that then people would also comment their other takeaways. So we would sort of start a, an, an online discussion, but also that I knew that posting it on the LinkedIn, for example, was part of the, the whole ritual that, that I made, right? So I had that small uh, reward for myself at the end of the, the whole cycle that was finishing to read that book. And um, so all of this was really helped me to, to get into that habit of reading uh, uh, books more, more often and then finally i think as well contributing to retaining the knowledge and making sure also that you understood all the different points or that you cover uh, the different areas i think something that is really helpful is to discuss the book with others right um, as i mentioned if you have a designer on your team maybe you can go for lunch and discuss a, a, a design related book that you have read or if you have read something about uh, product management or a specific framework, again, right, you can uh, go talk it with your, well, with your manager maybe or with your other, other product uh, peers and make sure also to understand, you know, what they got from it, uh, to express also what were your main takeaways and then maybe, you know, they, they will also have a different point of view. Uh, so all of this really helped me not only to get into the mood of reading, but also making sure that I would retain as much knowledge as possible from the book itself. Uh, now, again, you are convinced that you're reading, you know what to read, and you know how to retain the most knowledge from it. The next step is, of course, how can you apply, how can you apply all these learnings to your company, right? Um, what I do related to making the same highlights or marking these areas that I find most important from a specific book is that I start thinking already, how can I apply this to my specific product or to my company, right? So for example, uh, if you read the Lean Product Playbook, it has a lot of frameworks for prioritization, for example. So then I start thinking, okay, maybe I can start applying this new way of prioritizing uh, stories. Uh, I write it down and then, uh, as, as I say on point two, I start making a plan um, to see how, how I will apply these learnings uh, to my team, right? Um, so I start saying, for example, okay, from uh, next month on the sprints, I will start using this new prioritization framework. I discuss it with everyone on the team just to make sure that I get their buy-in, just to make sure that everyone also agrees with me that we can apply and test it. And then... Um, I think th something very important is also to then make it official, right? So as part of the plan should be write down exactly what kind of learnings you want to apply, write down what are the goals or the objectives that you want to get out of applying these new learnings. So for example, again, uh, if you are thinking of apply applying a new prioritization framework, maybe you should write down that the goal is that then, um, I don't know, for example, you will uh, get more impact from experimentation or you will develop the MVP faster, for example, right? Uh, and then all of that should go into making it official. I think as part of this, it's also important to not only get the buy-in from your team, but also to discuss it with your manager so that then you also have the support from him. Um, and, and it's something that you you also treat it as a product itself, right? You, you want to launch it, you want to measure if it's indeed helping you. And then at the end, you want to evaluate to see if you want to keep the learning or you want to just discard it and maybe try something else, right? And of course, then if you see that maybe this helped you in your product or in your team, of course, then you can then uh, promote it to other teams in your company and then maybe everyone will start applying it. Um, so that's how I found then applying the learnings from the book, um, how, how I have found it to be most useful. Um, so then as, um, now as a next step on like what uh, or how can you get started, these are uh, five of the books that I found not only more interested, interesting, uh, but also I think more unique between them, right? So inspired uh, by, by Marty Kagan, I think is a, 
it's a must read for every product manager because I think I think well, at least to me the main takeaway was that uh, you are really the one responsible for the success of the team of the product sorry right um, and it really explains well not only what the role of the product manager is but what the role or how should a product team perform so I think inspired is like a must read and number one on my uh, recommendations list and the lean product playbook by Dan Olsen is also very good uh, I would say basic or intro level uh, product book for, for every product manager because it contains a lot of frameworks and very clear examples on things that you can apply you know, the next day after you read the book into your day-to-day -day work. And high, high Output Management by Andrew Groove. It's sort of an old book by now, but I think as well it's a classic uh, and it doesn't talk that much um, to you as a product manager, but it talks more about uh, middle-level managers and you know how to lead a team or how to what kind of even what kind of uh, different meetings and one to ones you should have with people that are reporting to you or to whom you report how to think of your company in terms of process with the goal of improving the output right that i think is very related to 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 the role of the product manager at the end you want to you want to try to treat everything as a process so you can always improve that the output of your of your team for example and the design of everyday things, if you have a designer or even if you don't have a designer in your team, I think it's also a must read, um, a bit of an old book as well, but uh, a classic. I think if you want to make a product that is, that is really, you know, people can find it useful um, and valuable, this is a must read as well. Uh, and then the last one is uh, how to measure anything. This book, I usually find people don't really know it that much, but um, I think it's very useful and also gives a lot of um, um, food for thought because it basically, well, that's what the title is, right? You, you can me measure everything. So, for example, if you're in a company where the main objective is to innovate next year, right? And it will help you understand how you can then go back to your business and start thinking, okay, what do we really mean by innovation? How, how can we measure this? Or how do we want to track it? What does it actually mean? Uh, and then it will make you really think about uh, what to measure, how to measure things, what is the cost of measuring something, what is the risk of maybe not measuring, and what other things you can use. Uh, and the book even has a, a workbook next to it, so you can also do some exercises, right? Have some math, but um, I think it's really um, a, a worth reading uh, book. I'm also including there a list with uh, on the read more where you will then find well a, a big list of books uh, that I've read and enjoyed uh, with a link to, to Goodreads. So I also encourage you to, to go there and see them. And finally, as I mentioned, if you're also uh, curious or interested in uh, start reading more and maybe then be able to discuss them with other product uh, colleagues and also sometimes with the author of the book, you can also join us at uh, protobookclub.com and there we will uh, suggest what books to read. We will all discuss, uh, read them in our own time and then we will all meet on a video call and discuss the books at the end of, uh, at the, end of the month, usually. And with that having said, that's uh, me. I hope you enjoyed this and um, yeah, I hope to see you reading. Thank you very much.